I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Today we are looking at the message, Effectual Fervent Prayer for Nation. Effectual Fervent Prayer for our nation. Daniel prayed fervently for his nation Israel. And true to God's nature and promise, God answered. Good men have always been concerned for their countries. And righteous people always desire the best for their fellow men. And for their nation. You remember Abraham? He was concerned for Sodom and Gomorrah. So he prayed. You remember Moses? He was bodied for Israel. And he prayed. And Daniel in the passage you are looking at today. Also prayed for his nation. And God answered Daniel's prayer. Because uh, Daniel prayed in the right attitude. Incidentally the prayer of Daniel for the nation. Contains a lot of instructions for us, or can effectually pray for our nations too. Please look at Daniel chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face to the Lord God, to see by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, great and dreadful, awesome God, keeping the covenant, and mercy to them that love Him, and to them that keep His commandments. There you find the beginning of His prayer. As we look at His prayer, we take instruction from that, and we see that we will not be doing well, we will not be acting like Daniel if we do not pray for our nation as well. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7, Jeremiah 29, verse 7, And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. There we have the principle of scripture, in fact an instruction in scripture, that we need to pray for the country in which we live. Because it's as the country has peace, will have peace. It's as the country has prosperity, will have prosperity. It's as things go well in our country. It'll go well, it will go well with our families and ourselves as well. There are five principles I want to bring out as we look at five elements as we see in the prayer of Daniel. You find out, number one, the prayer of Daniel was, number one, guided by the Word of God. Guided by the Word of God. If your prayer is going to be effective for the nation, for the family, for the church, for yourself, there is one thing that will characterize your prayer. It will be guided by the Word of God. Number two, governed by the will of God. If our prayers are going to be effective, if God is going to answer the prayer, it should be governed by the will of God. Number three, granted after confessing the wickedness against God. You see, when there is sin, when there is wickedness, when there is iniquity, we cannot just rush to the presence of God and begin to pray. The prayer will be granted, the answer will be granted after confessing wickedness against God. Number four, guaranteed by our walk before God. You know, Daniel, he was a man that was walking in righteousness, in holiness, before God. Whether what he did in the government himself as a government official, or what he did in the worship of his God, he walked before God in righteousness and holiness. Because of that, answer to prayer was guaranteed. Guaranteed by our walk before God. Number five, that
that kind of prayer glories in the worthiness of God. If you look at the prayer of Daniel, you see how he exalted God, how he adored God, how he worshipped God, and he spoke about the worthiness of God. He actually rejoiced and gloried in the worthiness of God. Those are the five principles we want to look at. And as you take those five principles, and you look at your own prayer life, and you make sure that everything is according to what we see in Daniel, then you will see that God will answer. Let's go back to number one, effectual fervent prayer for our nation. How will the prayer be effectual? It will, number one, be guided by the word of God. Come to Daniel, Daniel chapter 9, reading from verse 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, came to Jeremiah the prophet, and that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Because of what I read in Jeremiah, you know what I did when I was guided by that word of God. Then I determined I was going to pray. In verse 3, I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Daniel came to uh, Jerusalem, he came to Babylon around the age of 14. Actually, between 14 and 17, he was a teenager. By this time now, the kingdom of, ba of uh, Babylon has acquitted the stage. And now we have uh, uh, the Middle Persians. And now he tells us it was in that first year of periods, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the meat, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. You understand? Right now, Daniel has spent about 67 years in. In Babylon, take the lower age, if he entered that Babylon at the age of 14. Now with a 14 plus 67, he was now above 80 years of age. And actually, even if God released the children of Israel to go back to the land, he would not have too much enjoyment in that. He was not praying for himself. It was advantageous for him to stay there because he was one of the favored presidents of the land. But he wasn't praying for himself. It was not because of his convenience. He was too old to enjoy the release from captivity. But he was concerned for the people of God. And that concern made him to go back to the word of God. And in verse 2 he says, I, Daniel, I understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. And what, where is that? Look at Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Reading there from verse 10. In Jeremiah 29 verse 10, hear the word of the Lord says to Jeremiah, For thus says the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. That's the word of God that uh, Daniel read. And then you saw, when the people of God have spent 70 years in the land of their captivity, the Lord will bring them back to their land. But there is an approach you can take when you look at such a prophecy. You can take a passive attitude. Oh well, God said he will do it. And 70 years is almost coming to an end. The children of Israel have spent 67 years. And you can just be passive about it. There is nothing to do about it. And God will generally bring his word to pass. But you know why Daniel didn't do that? Because immediately in verse 11, immediately God said, For I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Which means, at the end of the 70 years, I'm thinking about you. Although I've suspended you from the nation, and I've, can, I've caused you to be carried away captive, I'm still thinking about you. I'm going to give you the expected end. Then ye shall call upon me 
Although I said 70 years, don't be pessimistic and don't be passive and don't think, well, since God says 70 years, we have nothing to do about it. He will do what he will do. He said, no, I'm not going to do it except you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Do you see that? When you read the word of God and God says, I am going to do this, you will not say, well, he is a sub God, is a mighty God, is a majestic God, is a faithful God, he will not forget what he has said, therefore I don't need to pray, God himself even said, after he said in verse 10, that 70 years are determined upon the people, they're going to be in Babylon for 70 years, then he said, at the end of those 70 years I'm going to give the expected end, but you know before it will come, you will pray unto me with all your heart. Then look at verse 14. Then I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations. And from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you again into this place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. We learn one principle. One principle is that before you pray, if your prayer is going to be effective, it must be guided by the word of God. Read the word, study the word, and see what God has said he will do on the basis of what God said he will do. You will go to the presence of God and you bring this word before him. In 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 25. This is bringing the word of God to the Lord in prayer. This is allowing our prayer for the nation, a prayer for the church, a prayer for the family, a prayer for the individual to be guided by the word of God. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as thou hast said. That's how to pray. Do you as thou hast said. Oh Lord, we are coming to you. We are not just saying you do this. It's because you promised it. This is exactly what you said. When our prayers are guided by the word of God, then you will find that God himself will answer number two. In number two, we are looking at government by the will of God. You know, it's a useless thing to pray against the will of God. We are told to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And Jesus gave us the example. You know the example Jesus gave us? He went to a Gethsemane and he prayed. And he said, If this cup will not pass by me, except it, I drink it, Thy will be done. That means then, if we're going to pray and pray aright, that prayer must be governed by the will of God. We're back in Daniel. In Daniel, we we'll look at it again in verse, in chapter 9 and verse 2. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the bulls number of, year, of the years whereof the watch of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he will accomplish. 20 years and the desolation of Jerusalem. And then he began to uh, make his request of the Lord. And at the end of the prayer, you know how he prayed? Look at verse 19. In verse 19, he said, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defy not for thine own sake, O my God, for the city. For the city and for thy people are called by thy name. He said, all I'm asking for God is for your sake, is for your glory, is because of your honor, is because of your will. This is what you willed to do. By the way, brothers and sisters, how did uh, Daniel know that this is the will of God? You must come back to uh, Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah. Chapter 29, we're going to see how Daniel knew that these 70 years will not be 71 years, will not be 80 years, that at the end of the 70 years, the children of Israel will come out of captivity. He knew that to be the absolute, final, perfect will of God, and therefore he made his prayer on the basis of the will of God. Look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, reading there from verse 10 again, for thus says the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, look at it now, 
I will visit you. That's number one thing. He said after those 70 years, this is my will. He expressed his will by using the word I will a number of times. Number one, I will visit you. Number two, I will perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. That's the will of God. And Daniel said, I know the will of God and Satan cannot contradict this. I know the will of God. I know the mind of God. This is what he will do. Look at verse 14. I will be found of you, says the Lord. He says, I know his will. Prayer becomes very simple. When you know the perfect, absolute will of God, now, now first time, I will turn away your captivity. Fifth time, I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, says the Lord. The sixth time, I will bring you again into this place whence I caused you to be carried away. Come to you, brothers and sisters. Check the word. Look at the word. Search the word. And as you find the will of God, when you know the will of God, then your prayer will be governed by the will of God. Actually, that's what we're told in the New Testament, that when we pray, we do not know how to pray or what we ought to pray for. But then, as we discover the will of God, the Holy Spirit ministering unto us, then we're able to pray according to His will. And if we pray according to His will, then God will answer that prayer. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. We'll back up and read from verse 26. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, that we know not what we should pray for, as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, according to, according to what? I said according to what? According to the will of God. If you want to be mighty in prayer, find out what the will of God is. Number three now, granted after confessing wickedness against God. It will be a waste of time if we close our eyes to the very fact that the nation has gone astray. I want you to look at the prayer of Daniel. Come back to Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel chapter 9, first of all, I want you to see how he includes himself. When you are praying for the nation, you include everybody. Look at verse 5. We have seen. Look at verse 6. And neither have we hearkened unto, the, unto thy servants the prophets. Look at verse 7. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us. Confusion. Look at verse 8. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion. Verse 9. To the Lord, our God. Plural. And in verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God. We're looking at verse 11. Therefore, in the middle part, the cause is put upon us in the latter part of verse 11 we have sinned against him in verse 12 and as he has confirmed his word which is big against us and against our judges you see something there he used the a plural all the time it's we it's all of us as a nation together that's good intercession when you are praying you make sure that there is confession of the wickedness of the nation. And then you don't excuse yourself. Everybody is involved in this.